Now, this is great news for the Baltimore Ravens when it comes to a wide receiver's potential availability. And also, Roquan Smith, he has some strong, strong, powerful words about Derrick Henry and for the Baltimore Ravens. And we're going to get into both of those shortly. But before we do, team, keep it clean. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn the notifications on so you don't miss a single video. Leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton. I got to give a special shout out to our newest Team Keep It Clean patrons, my guy Jamar and my guy Kylon. They got some cool names, man. I like the spelling of both of them, too. I appreciate y'all becoming Team Keep It Clean patrons. Thank you for that. Uh, if y'all would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. And if you don't want to, hey, as long as you subscribe and you turn on the notice, then we're good to go. Now, we've been talking about the wide receiver position for the Baltimore Ravens for a long, long time. Time. Now, the conversation last year kind of simmered down a bit because of the way that the Baltimore Ravens approached the position, the way that they handled the position of wide receiver. They had signed Odell Beckham Jr. last offseason. They still had Rashad Bateman. They had a Tylen Wallace. They had a Devin Duvernay. They drafted Zay Flowers. So at wide receiver, it was look, they broke Stein Nelson Aguilar, too. Can't forget about him. So at wide receiver last year, I'm like, okay, I, I like it. I wish it would have been done like this a long time ago, but I did like it. Uh, but this offseason, with the departure of Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, and with Rashad Bateman having probably a disappointing season last year, uh, I would say the Baltimore Ravens will, are probably and should be in the mix when it comes to looking for a wide receiver. Even though Zay Flowers had a lot of success last season, he did a phenomenal job as a rookie last season. Of course, had his mistakes here and there, but nobody's going to be a perfect player but getting somebody to really accompany him to compliment him would be a beautiful thing for the Baltimore Ravens that player could end up being Rashad Bateman but the thing with Rashad Bateman is that he has dealt with a, a plethora of injuries but even more so because I ain't really concerned about Rashad Bateman being injury prone I don't think he's injury prone I just think it's been weird timing with his injuries but you cannot bank on that. And I don't think the Ravens should just bank on the potential hope that Rashad Bateman breaks out uh, this upcoming season. You hope that he does for sure. We hope that he goes off this season. But stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Corlin Sutton, a name that has been talked about with the Baltimore Ravens very often. Benjamin Albright, who's been covering the Broncos for a while now. I, I can't believe I missed this because he had some interesting things to say yesterday. And let's read this report. It says, last year, when I reported that this staff wasn't as high on Judy and Sutton and was looking to move them, was met with pushback everywhere. So basically he's saying that last year, he was saying that the Broncos wanted to move off of both Jerry Judy and Corlin Sutton. And a lot of fans were like, no, that's not true. We don't like that. Uh -uh, that can't be right. But anyway, he said, then they tried to move Sutton to the Ravens before the season, and they did move Judy after the season for peanuts. Will Corlin Sutton be a Bronco this season? So that is significant, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. The part where they said they tried to move Sutton to the Baltimore Ravens before the season, um, that is big because that's what we were talking about in yesterday's video because uh, I, I could not remember what the compensation would have been, but it was attempted. The Broncos tried to move off of Corlin Sutton, Ravens, but it obviously didn't work out because he remained a Denver Bronco. But one thing that I know, this is why this is so significant for the Baltimore Ravens, especially this offseason, when you can tell they're looking to make a move at wide receiver. You don't just bring in Michael Gallup for fun. You, you don't do that. You don't just bring in Josh Reynolds just for the heck of it. No. You're doing that for a reason. You're letting us know that you're looking to make a move very, very soon. Um, but with the Baltimore Ravens, one thing that we talk about on here all the time is that if they really like you, if you really like that to them, they'll come back and eventually get you. We look at players like Yannick Ngakwe. When Yannick Ngakwe was with the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Baltimore Ravens love Yannick Ngakwe. They tried to trade for Yannick Ngakwe. They ended up failing. But what happened? A little while later, he was on the Vikings and the Baltimore Ravens. They circled back around, and they got him. You remember uh, Justin Houston? Justin Houston became a free agent. The Baltimore Ravens loved Justin Houston. They really liked this game. They loved him. Tried to bring him in for a visit and all that. And they wanted him. They wanted to sign Justin Houston. But what happened? He ended up signing with the Colts. A couple years later, what happened? They ended up bringing in 
Justin Houston. They got him. They circled back around for him, and they ended up getting him. And there's more players that we could talk about that this has happened with because it has. It is a trend for the Baltimore Ravens. If they really like you, hey, they'll say, oh, we'll be back for you in a little bit. Don't worry. We're coming back. So could this be that with Corlin Sutton, he could be on the Baltimore Ravens radar? Well, we don't know if he is or not, but what's really great news, in my opinion, about this is Corlin Sutton was a second-round pick in 2018. I didn't know he came out the same year as Lamar. But anyway, he was a second-round pick in 2018. They had a first-round pick from a more recent draft in Jerry Judy, a first-round pick that they just traded for a fifth and a sixth rounder. So somebody younger, somebody who they drafted more recently in Jerry Judy, and they traded him for a fifth and sixth round pick. Y'all get where I'm going with this? I think a lot of y'all following along already, but if you're not, let me explain it. If they were willing to trade Jerry Judy, a first round pick, for a fifth and sixth rounder to the Browns, what could the Baltimore Ravens get for Cortland Sutton? And think about that. Jerry Judy wasn't even on his second contract yet. But what could the Baltimore Ravens offer the Broncos for Cortland Sutton? It would not have to be anything crazy. It would not be no first round pick. It would not be no second round pick. Could it be a third round pick? I don't even think so. I don't. A fourth round pick? Maybe, but again, for Jerry Judy, fifth and sixth rounder. Now, maybe it would be a fourth round pick because Corlin Sutton, he had more success than Jerry Judy with the Denver Broncos overall. But the compensation that they would give up, that they would have to give up for Corlin Sutton, it would not be anything crazy at all. And then when you think about the potential of a Corlin Sutton in the Baltimore Ravens offense, a big Physical wide receiver. Now, there's been so much talk recently amongst Ravens fans. Ravens need a big body wide receiver. They need a receiver that's tall, get the jump balls, get the 50-50 ball. Hey, and that's great because that, that's amazing. that could make Lamar Jackson's job easier. He may high point a ball and say, hey, go up and get it. And call it a sudden, he come down with it. Because you know that happens with Mark Andrews. He does with Isaiah Likely, but those are big tight ends. But with, as far as receiver... You can't really do that with a Zay Flowers, and especially with a deep ball, you have to, if Zay Flowers got a defender close to him, you got to put that ball in the perfect spot. Why? Because Zay Flowers is a shorter receiver, so especially with the deep balls, it makes it harder to connect with those. But with a taller receiver, which, again, a lot of Ravens fans have been clamoring for, which I get, taller receiver, you, hey, go get it. Okay, cool, Lamar, I got you. And he jump up, boom, come down with it. But with Corlin Sutton, again, the Ravens, if they really want him, if they, if the, they potentially wanted a Corlin Sutton, you're not going to have to do much to get him. It would be super easy. And then another thing that makes it even easier, he only has, what, I think two mil in guaranteed money left on his contract. So I'm sure you would redo his deal. You would rework a contract for him. But with him only having two mil of guaranteed money left on there, that makes it even easier for you. That makes the job that much more simple. And another thing that Benjamin Albright said, that the, he said the Broncos staff, they were not really high on Jerry Judy or Cortland Sutton. So again, if they're not high on somebody, if they're like, oh, whatever, whatever about this guy, then they'll be more than willing to move off of them. This offseason, they moved off from Russell Wilson. And they still paying him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They are still paying him so much money. He's making, what, $39 million from them this upcoming season. And he ain't even on the team. They released one of the best safeties in the game that I'm still hoping the Baltimore Ravens sign with Justin Simmons. They moved off of a former first-round pick. Wide receiver Jerry Judy for fifth and sixth-round picks. They traded a first-round pick. For fifth and sixth round. Like, think about this. Eric DaCosta, a couple of years ago, he traded Hollywood Brown, a former first round pick, for a first round pick. He got a first rounder from the Cardinals for Hollywood. First rounder. Jerry Judy, who was a later first round pick than Hollywood, 
they traded him for fifth and sixth rounders. Like, that is so significant, man. And you cannot underestimate or undermine the significance of what that means. Especially for a guy like Corlin Sutton, who could potentially be available, especially if he's holding out. We know he ain't holding out for fun. He don't want to be there. And again, it's voluntary right now. So let's find that he's not any a big deal. But yeah, I, I, I definitely think this has the potential of being the Baltimore Ravens move. Now, I know there's some people that could look at this and say, oh, man, call it sudden. Uh, that, that would be a backup option. That shouldn't be the first option. We should be going after somebody like Brandon Ayuk, DK Metcalf, Devontae Adams. We need to go after the big name guy. And, and look, I ain't mad at that at all. I, I get it. I, I, I get exactly where you're coming from because I'm with it all day. Y'all know, like, if I had to choose out of any potential wide receivers that the Baltimore Ravens could trade for, my first vote would be DK Metcalf all day. All day, that would be the guy that I would love for the Baltimore Ravens to get. But I know we have our dream scenarios, which I want you to keep on pitching those dream scenarios, keep thinking about them, keep talking about them. But then when you think realistically, especially when it comes to Baltimore Ravens, especially when it comes to Eric DaCosta, how he operates, how they've operated. I was just talking to my guy JT uh, uh, recently, and, and something that he mentioned, he said, the, 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 the past, it'll tell you about the future with the Baltimore Ravens. And that's something that all of y'all know, because, of course, with their past, their past shows their actions, it shows their tendencies, their habits. So that should be indicative of what they'll do in the future. But trading a first-round pick, oof, that's something. Because, again, when we talk about Brandon Ayuk, who would be nice with the Baltimore Ravens, you think about Eric DeCosta parting with a first-round pick. It's like, ooh, that's, <laughs> that's not something I could really see him doing. A second-rounder, oh, yeah, we could see that. Especially the trend of second-round picks that he done got over time. But with a first-rounder, no. But if it's for a fourth-rounder, a fifth-rounder, and he would have to depart with that to get a proven player, especially at the wide receiver position, I think he'd do it all day. Now, in other news with the Baltimore Ravens, they had a press conference today that featured their head of strength and conditioning. Um, it also featured a couple of players like our guy Tyler Linder, Flinder, Tyler Linderbaum. Uh, it also featured Roquan Smith and Derrick Henry. Uh, the strength and conditioning coach, he said a lot of the players that showed up, they in shape. That makes his job easier. Uh, Tyler Linderbaum, he was asked, oh, have you spoken to Lamar Jackson about just you two's connection and rapport and stuff? And he said, no, I haven't. But what I'm focused on is just the offensive line being the best that we can possibly be. But it was really Roquan Smith that grabbed our attention big time because we were listening to the press conference. We were doing some other stuff in the background while the press conference was playing. Um, but... When I listen to Roquan Smith, I say, I heard what he said about Patrick Queen. And he's like, oh, man, well, Patrick Queen, he's the enemy now. But he said, he said he still got it's all love with Patrick Queen. But war is war. So when Ravens play the Steelers, I'm sure they're going to give each other a hug and stuff. But it, it'll be fine. But anyway, what really caught my attention is what Patrick Queen said about the addition of Derrick Henry and everything that it could possibly mean for the Baltimore Ravens. Now, when I say possibly, I do mean that because... He said what we hope it means for the Baltimore Ravens and what we should expect it to mean for the Baltimore Ravens, but it's up to them to actually show that it means something. And let's just read the quote. Uh, Roquan Smith was asked, what are your thoughts on the addition of Derrick Henry? Uh, and he said, I think that's huge. I think it's going to make us stick to what we do. Now, I'm not a big fan of one-liners. I'm not a big fan of quotes when it comes to uh, players getting quoted or any, just people getting quoted in general because a lot of times quotes can be taken all the way out of context, but <laughs> this is not one of those times. Again, I think that's huge. I think it's going to make us stick to what we do. Baltimore Ravens last season, number one rushing team in the league. Number one rushing team in the league by far. They did their thing last year on the ground. They were doing their thing through the air as well. Um, but the, the the run game has set up a lot with the pass. It just makes stuff easier. When you're being able to run the ball, it just makes life easier because it allows the, the passes to be easier. It allows the play action to be easier. It allows the defense to get more rested. And it allows drives to last long. It just makes life that much better. And see, the Baltimore Ravens were the number one rushing team in the league through the regular season. During the Texans game, 
Initially, they might have been a little rusty. They had a nice little long break. They a little rusty in the first half, but the second half they came out, they got back to themselves. But in the AFC Championship game, it, it, it seemed as if Will Smith had came through and he brought that men in black pen and phew, made them forget everything about who they were on offense. Because defense did their thing. Defense did more than enough to win that game, but it was the offense. The offense with the big let down in so many different ways. I mean, red refs played their part too for sure. It was some funny business, but the offense they they certainly didn't make it easy on themselves at all. So they just they forgot to run the ball. They they forgot to run the ball, and it could be for a million different reasons, but they forgot to. Um, and that's just that's an issue. That that's a big issue with the Baltimore Ravens when it comes to big games, especially big games and the big moments uh, in the playoffs. They tend to forget who they are, and it seems like they just lose themselves in the biggest moments, and you can't do that. Now, with them signing Derrick Henry, I remember when it was first talked about that they were potentially interested in the Derrick Henry. I said the same thing before, and I said the same thing after they made the signing official. What Derrick Henry brings to this Baltimore Ravens is regular season. We know he'll do his thing. We know he'll be fine. I ain't worried about regular season. I don't think you should be either. Because if you look at everything that he did with the Tennessee Titans on that team, even in recent years, because there were some Titans teams that were loaded up and Derrick Henry did his thing. But these recent Titan teams, they ain't been loaded like that, like that. I mean, they got our guy, DeAndre Hopkins. Should have been a Raven, but they ain't been loaded up like that. And he still has continued to produce. Because that's all that Derrick Henry does. He just produces. But with him joining these Baltimore Ravens, I think the expectation should be that he continues to produce. But where I think his impact could be felt the most and what we've continued to say is in the playoffs because of a couple of reasons. One, you just see him. Like, you see Derrick Henry, you're like, whoa. Like, that's, that's a giant. That's, that, that dude is huge. Like, you, you can't miss him on the sideline. Um, but with the Baltimore Ravens having made a significant financial investment into Derrick Henry, you're not going to want that money to go to waste. You certainly won't. So with the financial investment in Derrick Henry, with Derrick Henry being a running back of pedigree, like Jeremy Fowler reported this offseason, he said, hey, the Baltimore Ravens want to add a running back that has some pedigree to him, that has made a name for himself. They did just that. So they, it will be somebody who they respect a lot more than the guys that they've had previously. So with Derrick Henry being back there, come playoff time, they should not, and we hope that they won't forget about the run game now the passing game is still obviously super super important but make life easy on yourself you can still run that ball and of course every game is different not every game is going to be the same but you do not want to forget what got you there your bread and butter so that is essential to the baltimore ravens having success uh roquan smith speaking of success and success cut short uh, he was also asked uh, how long it took him to get over the loss in the AFC championship game. But this statement right here, I agree with Roquan Smith a lot. I know uh, it was asked amongst Ravens fans and really just again, amongst every fan base. Because you get asked the question, oh, would you rather lose in the AFC championship or the, or, or the NFC championship for NFC fans? Would you rather lose in the game before the Super Bowl or the game or the actual Super Bowl? And some fans will say, oh, the game before the Super Bowl, because I, I wouldn't want my team being humiliated like that. Then some people will say, oh, the Super Bowl, because, hey, we made it, but, oh, we won game short, and we will, uh, we lost to the Super Bowl winner. So, but my answer was always, like, I, I want my team to go as far as they possibly can. I want them to go all the way. And, of course, I want them to win, to go all the way and win. I don't want them to lose in the Super Bowl at all, but I would, I would take that. Get them going all the way. Now, I certainly wouldn't want that Super Bowl hangover, but I would want them advancing all the way. But Roquan Smith, he shared the same sentiments because he said he'd rather uh, have his heart ripped out every time in a big game as opposed to losing when they did. Uh, and I, I, I agree with that. I know a lot of y'all may not agree with that, and I understand why. Because you're like, man, that's, taking a Super Bowl loss would be much harder than taking an AFC championship loss. It would be. Now, since Ravens fans, we don't know nothing about that because Ravens, when they, whenever they get to the Super Bowl, they win. That's it. They win. 
Me too. Well, no, undefeated. And hopefully after the season, oh, we ain't gonna talk about Super Bowl yet, though. But they undefeated there, so they don't know what it's like to have that heartbreak. And hopefully they never do. Now, uh, speaking of the guy who will hopefully get us to where we want to go, is Derrick Henry. And Derrick Henry, he said that he felt it was important, especially as a new guy, uh, to show up for this voluntary team activities and workouts. Uh, he said he wanted to show his teammates and the organization that he's here and that he's committed and said he wanted to start developing a relationship with his teammates. So Derrick Henry, as expected, I mean, he's already off to a great start. We didn't think it would be any different. We, yeah, we just knew with Derrick Henry that he was going to come to the Baltimore Ravens and do his thing. Um, so, yeah, man, it, it's, it's fun. It's fun to think about the potential with Derrick Henry. It's fun to think about the potential with Derrick Henry in the playoffs. Um, but now it's up to the Baltimore Ravens once that season starts to incorporate him to the full. Uh, but especially once the postseason starts to not forget who they are.